Hello dear readers, and welcome to my new couch. I was going to film this in my reading nook, but I don't know if you can hear the rain. Hi, Malcolm says hi. Um, but it's quite cold. I'm very sore, and the heater is out here, so I decided to film out here today instead. Uh, this probably isn't the best angle, but, and you know, there's a big blank space behind me, but what are you going to do? For now, this will have to do. So, get comfy, get cozy, pull up a chair with Malcolm and I, while we do a spoiler-free book review of House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. For anything, just let me read you the Malcolm, read you the blurb. Sorry, Malcolm's probably more interesting to look at than I am. In a manor by the sea, twelve sisters are cursed. Annalie lives a sheltered life at Hymel, a manor by the sea with her sisters and their father and stepmother. Once there were twelve, but loneliness fills the grand halls now, and that four of the girls' lives have been cut short. Disturbed by a series of ghostly visions, Annalie becomes increasingly suspicious that her sister's deaths were no accidents. The girls have been sneaking out every night to attend glittering balls, dancing until dawn in silk gowns and shimmering slippers. And Annalie isn't sure whether to try to stop them or to join their forbidden trysts. Because who, or what, are they really dancing with? When Annalie's involvement with a mysterious stranger who has secrets of his own intensifies, it's a race to unravel the darkness that has fallen over her family before it claims her next. House of Salt and Sorrows is a spellbinding novel filled with magic and the rustle of gossamer skirts down long, dark hallways. And I didn't realise this when I started reading it, but this is actually a Twelve Dancing Princesses retelling, which, I mean, I've never read the Twelve Dancing Princesses, so that wouldn't have impacted my uh, understanding of this book at all. But I do plan on reading that now just to see... Um, if reading the original will then have an impact on what I thought of this one. But ultimately, I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. I read it on my Kindle, as I read pretty much everything. Loved it so much that I bought a physical copy and have actually started... annotating. So, what are my impressions of this? Um, firstly, it is from a first-person perspective, entirely from Annalie's perspective. She's our main character. And I found her very compelling. Uh, she goes through a whole range of emotions. She's grieving the loss of her sisters. She's scared that they might keep dying because there's rumours of a curse. Um... She wants to move on with her life and live happily and have a normal life and have her sisters have normal lives. So there's just a lot going on in her um, view of the world. Uh, all of the sisters are quite young as well, so including Annalie and Camille, who is her older sister. I don't remember if their actual ages were mentioned, but I got the impression of them being 20 or younger, maybe 18. Um... So yeah, I really liked our main character. I thought she was very interesting. And all the the sisters, there were a lot of them, and sometimes they were a bit overlooked a little, if that makes sense. Um, like, you get to spend time with all of them, but, for example, the triplets. I They were purposefully very similar, but I had a bit of a hard time figuring out who was who in some instances because of the way they behaved. I was especially fond of Verity, which is the youngest sister, and to be fair, in the story you do actually spend a lot of time with her as well, because Annalie is very protective of her little sister. Well, her littlest sister, she's got quite a number of little sisters. Um, Fisher was an interesting character, I quite liked him. And also Cassius. There is a romance in this, um, 
which I suppose would be expected from reading the back. I didn't actually read much about this book before I delved in, so I was a little... I totally thought this was just straight-up horror, um, so I was a little surprised when the romance happened, but I actually quite enjoyed it. I don't mind a bit of romance here and there if it's done well. Um, and Cassius is an interesting character as well. Um, and yeah, just all of the character, the, the um, supporting cast were very interesting and added a lot to Annalie's life and understanding of the world. Speaking of which, I loved the setting. So the majority of the book takes place in Highmore Manor or around Highmore Manor, which is where the girls live, where the Thomas family lives. Um, so that in itself, you know, a, a manor on an island overlooking the ocean, you know, it's a bit of a, it's atmospheric. It's slightly isolated. It's potentially dangerous with all of the cliffs and things. Um, it can be moody if the weather is not great, but it can be beautiful. So there was the setting of High Moor Manor. Um, really, I think, captured the story, captured what was going on. And when you when it comes to like a gothic kind of tale, the atmosphere and the setting is especially important. Um, it's often more uh, meant to be more symbolic than in other genres, and I think that this one did it very well. But they actually don't just stay in the manor. They um, actually live on some islands. Give me a sec to find the name of them again. The Salan Islands. Um, and their dad is actually the Duke of these islands, so their family is quite high standing. Um, and these islands were beautiful. There, there was just a few of them within a small space you had to travel to by boat. Um, the majority of the people that live on these islands are people of the sea. They're fishermen, uh, sailing merchants, all that sort of thing. Um, and again, like, this island setting is isolated from the rest of the kingdoms and the world within the story. But they bring the story to life. I loved getting to explore the islands alongside Annalie, um, meeting the people that live there, learning about their beliefs, um, what's important to them. It was all, it went a long way in making this feel very much alive. It wasn't just Highmore Manor, it wasn't just the girls, there was a lot more than just that in the story, which I really liked. A lot of the time when I read, I mean, again, this isn't a full-on horror, but a lot of the time when I read horror, for the most part, you're experiencing the haunted house with the main character and a few side characters, and that's about it. But this one is a lot more expansive than that, which I found very enjoyable. Now, outside of the Salon Islands, there is actually an entire world, which, again, it just... You don't see much of it within the story, but the way the author writes about it, about religion, belief systems, cultural significances, this world feels very much as if it is ticking along while you're not there. It's just rotating on its axis, just like Earth, and getting about its business. And honestly, if the author decided to write more within this universe, maybe not the same genre, probably not with the same characters, um, but in different parts of the world. I truly believe that that would work very well, and I would love to read that and dive straight back into this universe if that would ever happen. Um, now, as far as the story goes, it was fantastic. It had everything that I love. It had a gothic, haunting-style um, focus. There was some romance, which I'm not... I can give, I can leave or take romance, often leave, but I enjoyed it in this. There is kind of a love triangle, but that resolves itself in a very unique and interesting way, let me tell you. Um, and there's just, there's a lot of fantasy as well in the balls that the sisters sneak off to attend, and 
the focus on the gods in this world and um, the different cultural celebrations, you actually get to experience the churning with these characters, which is sort of the beginning of the colder months. Um, and there's a festival that you go to with them and it's just beautiful and I love it. Um, you get to see a lot of sisterly bickering, but also affection, which adds a great deal of weight to the story. Um, it adds stakes because they truly care about each other, which I loved. And in the end, I was, I was actually shocked by quite a few of the twists in here, um, which was really fun. I had ideas about what was happening and then someone else, someone else would throw in an idea and I'd be like, oh, maybe it is that, not what I was thinking. And then, you know, things would be different and it was a heck of a ride that I really enjoyed. So I've covered characters, I've covered setting I've, and the world, I've covered story. I think that's all I really, really need to talk about in this um, spoiler-free review. I know I just gushed, basically. I don't actually really have much in the way of negatives to talk about because I just, I love this book so much. So if you're interested in any of the stuff I've just talked about, please give it a try. This came out last month and this is a debut novel, so... Um, that in itself, to me, makes it even more amazing because as someone working on my first novel, I can only hope to um, get this level of quality into my story and enjoyment from my readers. So yes, please like, comment and subscribe if this was interesting to you and stick around because soon I will be posting a spoilery discussion video, I suppose you could say. So that's for those of you who either don't care about spoilers and want to know what you're getting into or people who have already read it. But I will see you for that and happy reading.